What is going on, you beautiful humans? Welcome back to the channel. And hey, if you are new here, I'm sure plenty of you are. Welcome. So today, what I want to do is actually get started on a series of M1 uh, Mac setups here. And it, this is the Mac Mini, the M1 Mac Mini. I do have the upgraded version, uh, 16 gigs of RAM and a one terabyte SSD. Now in the series, I'm gonna be talking about gaming with this thing. We're gonna be video editing, which that's gonna to be today. And we're also gonna be talking about um, audio. So using Logic Pro X, we're gonna be throwing a lot of stuff at this computer. And rather than doing sort of that high uh, production that I do on the channel with all the B-roll and all of that, I'm gonna be bringing in behind the scenes of just cutting some 8K raw footage uh, that I got from a creator. And of course, I'm gonna link up the creators below that I have borrowed this footage from. So we're gonna be using Canon R5 8K raw footage, working with that. And also too, I'm gonna be bringing in some Sony A7S III footage as well. Now that's 4K, but that 8K footage, that is 12 bit. And of course the, the 4K um, from the A7S III is 10 bit. We're working in RAW. I have not transcoded anything. We are not optimizing anything. So the expectations need to be clear here, especially when it comes to that 8K RAW footage. Now, I think you might be surprised. I, I'm gonna put together a timeline for you, bring in my cameras here rather than do a screen record because I want to actually give as much leeway as I can to have Final Cut Pro do what it needs to do. Here's the thing though, this is not an editing and cutting tutorial. So any kind of uh, cutting and grading and adding LUTs, that's not exactly how I do things. So try not to critique how I'm actually color grading all this stuff. I just wanna show you what it looks like, how we're scrubbing through the timeline and how we're rendering and what's going on by just moving through the footage and editing it, adding the, the grade and seeing what we end up with. So. Let's actually get into it. I'm gonna be bringing you in, so let's hit it right now. All right, before we get Final Cut Pro going here, uh, let's actually take a look at iStat just to show you the CPU. So I had a couple spikes here um, just because I was testing something out. And so, but it, it's hanging out at idle. And for the GPU, again, a couple spikes. But we're gonna actually see once we get into this footage, how much we're taxing uh, the system. And of course, that's another reason why I didn't wanna run another video editor or a screen recorder. I know you can do that, especially even on the base, baseline Mac uh, minis, but let's just see what this setup does. So let's bring this a little bit bigger. Now I've got some 8K footage, R, Canon R5, and I have two sets of Sony A7S III footage. And of course, I'm gonna link everybody below and the reason why I did that is because this 8K footage sample that I have from the R5, which is actually beautiful. But it is, it's, it's log two, C log two, and it is 8K raw from the R5. The thing is too, is that I have, I'm just, I'm just adding the clips. All right, so this is just the, the 8K. Let's actually bring all of the volume down in the wind. So let's see as we play it in the timeline. So you can see the CPU is definitely spiking up there. Graphics about 75%. So these are just short clips. And again, that's why I wanted to add the Sony A7S III in there. It's beautiful though. I mean, this is really good looking footage already. All right, so let's add Let's add the A7S III footage. So we'll add this one from Sydney Deongson. We'll bring this down. 
and then Josh Yo from Make Art Now. I know that this, this one here is HEVC, 4K, 60 frames. Let's add that one in. And this one is also 60 frames, 4K, HEVC. And I believe there's another one that's HEVC, 4K. We're just gonna add that one in as well. So let's pull down, should have just already disconnected the audio from, from these clips. No stutter. Let's move it along a little bit. And of course, this was great that uh, I had this footage to edit on an iPad Air 4. Um, you should check that out. I will, I will link that up, but I was pretty impressed. This is all log. So this is um, S-log footage from both Sydney and from Josh. And let's see. So there's some processor spikes. And it kind of is settling down just about what 30, 35% um, as far as like these, these spikes here. And then you just have this baseline. And then as far as the GPU is concerned, it looks like at most we're going 75% of the GPU based on this. And and it's holding at 60 frames as far as um, the way this is the way this is actually playing back. In the memory, 23, wow. So definitely having, I mean, it's actually nice to have the 16 gigs of RAM. I'm certainly not using it all. I'm not even close to using it. I mean, so it's telling me that I have about between five and six gigs free. And I have Final Cut Pro open, a Google Chrome browser, a Safari finder. Okay, let's get some, let's get some, I mean, the footage itself is just gorgeous. So here's the thing, I love this monitor, but your scopes, again, this is not an editing tutorial, but your scopes, that's what you wanna pay attention to. This, again, I would edit it very differently. If I had some time, this was my footage, I was shooting for a client. I'm just trying to do a little bit of correction. Let's see what happens here. Ooh, look at that. So look at that bump when I just, just tweaked a little bit of that color, a little bit of that exposure, those shadows. So it's definitely, it's pushing the CPU. Graphics, a little bit above 75%, but it seems like the CPU is really taking a good bit of it, according to this. All right, so for the sake of time, let me just copy what I just did there and see what that does, rendering this. That's the one thing I really like about Final Cut Pro is that background render, this, that thing that can happen while you're doing something else, but it's definitely pushing that CPU and the graphics. Oh, it's definitely pushing that too. All right, so, but it's not, it hasn't crashed, it hasn't done anything. So what we'll do, let's actually, we'll come in here and we'll correct this. So let's 
So let me bring in some color curves here. Let's see if I can bring that down a bit. Gosh, that footage looks great too. All right, very simple, very simple correction. So let's see what happens now that I am if there's any difference here with the 4k which I'm not sure that it would be but different codec oh my gosh so the Mac mini <laughs> I mean, it's not even warm. And I couldn't even with my eGPU, it would not render. Well, first off, I would have a hard time playing this because again, my MacBook Pro, it's not a 15 inch or 16 inch. Um, the graphics performance is fantastic, but the processor, it just bottlenecks. And the fact that it's an eGPU, it's gonna bottleneck with Thunderbolt. But yeah, so, all right. So let's get to these clips too. Um, some more log, see what we got here. Again, I would do this very differently if I had the time, but for the sake of time, we are just kind of plowing through just a little bit of correction, some grade here. All right. And what I'm going to do, I'm just going to apply the same one and I have to say, between the R5 and the, and the A7S III, I mean, it's, they're both beautiful. What they, what they put out, they're both gorgeous. Let's put an adjustment layer in. Oh, wait. Yeah. We're just going to throw, I'm just going to throw a LUT over the whole thing. Again, we're not going for like, same look, but let's throw a LUT in. Let's go, I always like this vintage look. We'll bring it down though. Again, we're not going for the look. I'm just going for, just showing you when I'm correcting, grading, adding in LUTs. And let's see what that does. All right. CPU kicking up. I can't even hear the fan. I can feel it, but it almost feels like it's just at idle. I can hear my fan on my server over to my left, but out of the mini. All right. So the graphics definitely being pushed, but it is rendering it. I mean, as far as, as, as far as what's happening right now, even with my eGPU, First off, I couldn't even play this footage uh, on my computer, even with the eGPU. I already tried that. But the fact that it is doing this render as quick as it is, I'm, I'm impressed. All right, so let's get this thing rendered. Something that I actually use, I, I have something like a template that I've used from Compressor, but I, I have this within Final Cut Pro. So we are going to time this. And we'll put it into movies, save, and rendering. All right, so I wasn't actually gonna do an outro on this one, but I decided I needed to jump in to give a little bit of context, especially when we're working with that 8K footage. Like I said, nothing was optimized. We uploaded it or had it render to upload in 4K uh, to YouTube and, and there's a compressor template that I use. And so as far as that's concerned, think about this, it never crashed. You saw what the CPU and the GPU was actually doing. It definitely was getting worked. It certainly was. We were throwing everything at it, but it scrubbed through fine. 
no drop frames, there were no issues when it came to uh, correcting, grading, or any of that. But when it came to rendering, especially when we're not working with proxy files, but we're working with the actual raw footage that is not transcoded, not optimized, two hours and 27 minutes just for that two minute timeline with some 8K in there. So if you're primarily using 8K, you might not be using this M1 right now. However, think about this. Think about it for a second to, to just understand what the future is gonna be like for these chipsets. The fact that it just, I was working with 8K, no problem. But then here's the thing, I flipped over, I did a Sony A7S III uh, timeline and went over there and started a new library and new timeline and didn't transcode anything, didn't optimize anything, and a, a two minute timeline, just a, a little over 12 minutes. So scrubbing through, working through it, but a little over 12 minutes uh, to render that. And I mean, that being amazing, you have to understand, you can search all you want, looking at the Canon R5, the Sony a7S III, it is really chewing up people's machines. I mean, the 16 inch MacBook Pro, people's desktops, depending on what editor that you're using, it's really doing a number. So you have to put things in perspective that this is really something. Now what I'll do, I'll put in the description how long it actually took me to render this video because it's gonna be in 4K, but only in 8-bit. Um, that'll be interesting, but what I know is that this is going to give me so much of my time back. Anyway, putting it out there, just the truth, full transparency, not hiding anything from you, helping you trying to make that buying decision, hit me up in the comment section below. I'm also hanging out on Twitter quite a bit, so hang out with me over there. I will certainly update the community of any of the changes gaming and audio and all kinds of other stuff are going to be coming out on the channel so stay tuned for that really appreciate your time and attention you go out there and do those things you go rock faces be well i wish all of you uh, a peace and whatever you need in this time in 2020 as we're heading into the end of it thanks so much and i will catch you right back here on the next one